A Lightwave artist in Istanbul was looking for a solution to create the pin animation like in the X-Men movie, the first X-Men movie seen here in this image, where these individual little pins uh, form the cityscape here and the Statue of Liberty. Uh, it's basically the same setup as in this image, this uh, pin toy. It's a popular kid's toy uh, where you put pressure on the backside and it pushes the pins that you're touching forward. Uh, the, uh, the artist also was interested in finding out uh, how to set it up in the node-based displacement versus the texture, texture editor. Uh, so uh, let's start by hopping over to Modeler and creating the geometry we're going to need for this because that does play a, a role in how we'll go about doing it. And then we'll hop over to Layout and work in the, uh, with the displacements to, um, to make this work. So I'm going to start by creating a pin. Now in the X-Men movie, I think they, it, it was more based off of a, a box, but if we can create a pin, we can create a box. So let's go ahead and start by creating the pin. I'm going to use a ball to start with. Just pull that up a little bit. And I don't need the whole thing, so I'm going to get rid of this bottom half. Delete, center, a to fit window. I'm going to select all these, just lasso select all these points and with them selected hit P for make polygon. Okay, And with that selected B for bevel. I'm going to bevel in a little bit, actually a lot. I'm going to bevel in and with the right mouse button click and now I can uh, create another bevel. T for move. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, make a a long pin. Center that. And now I've got uh, my pin. It's a, it's a little faceted, but instead of adding more geometry, especially since we're going to see this from such a far way away, I'm going to Q for quality surfaces to change the surface. And I'm going to call this uh, pin. I'll have smoothing on. Okay, and that looks much better. So now I've got my uh, one pin, and I need to make a lot of pins to work with. But before I do, I'm going to set it up so that it makes it much easier to do the displacement. I'm going to go ahead and create a morph target. So come down here, M for morph, and make a new morph. And this one, I'm just going to call this UV, because I'm going to use it to help me make a UV map. The name really doesn't matter, but this is how I'm going to be able to remember what I'm using it for. Create. I can close this. Making sure that I'm not on my base and I am on my new morph. I'm going to size this down. Now I could size it down really small uh, and just work with a really small scale, but instead I'm just going to size it down to next to nothing, uh, where all the points are sitting right on top of each other. So I'm going to go over to Modify, Size, in for numeric, and I'm going to size it to zero, okay, and apply. So all that geometry is still there. It's just every single point on that geometry is sitting at the origin. Well, as I can see right here, it's not quite at the origin, so I'm going to hit F2 to center it. I can come back to my base and see that I still have my pin. That's just a morph. I'm morphing all the points down to the center. Uh, that's going to help us with our displacement. Okay, so now I just need to make a bunch of copies, okay, because I have one pin, and I just need to make a bunch. So instead of manually doing it, I'm going to come over to Multiply, and I'll come over to Array, and let's do, um, I have from a previous setup, I have 75 in there, but let's just do 20. We'll work with the smaller scale. So 20 on the X and 20 on the Z. And for my scale, by default, it's set, I'm going to put it back, it's set at 100. That would put the pins point to point, meaning one pin would be touching the next, the next. I need a little bit of space. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit of space. I'm typing in 105%. So it'll move over 100% the size of the object and 5% more to give me a little bit of gap in there. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now I've got, as you can see, a lot of pins. Let me zoom in just so you can see that what that five, that extra five percent was for. If you look right here, we've got space between all the pins. If I if I only had a hundred percent, this point and this point would be touching. And though I could do that, I don't want it. I want a little bit of space, just like the the pin toy that we're kind of mimicking here has. Okay. So now that I have this um, set up, I'm going to go ahead and 
center it. I'm a big fan of centering. Uh, and I'm going to go over to layer 2, put layer 1 in the background, come over to create, box, and I'm just going to create a, a kind of a bounding box around all of my pins. I'm going to put both in the foreground by holding down shift and clicking the top of layer 1. Come over here to UV and as you can see I've got my bounding box and I've got all my points um, sitting here. Uh, it's, it's all the points for each pin but it's, it's just represented as a point and we're going to use this setup to create our UV map. So I'm going to come over to T for textured UV, new, and we'll just say um, pins. We're going to do a planar map uh, we'll keep it linear and in the y-axis because we're looking right down the y-axis here. So I'm going to hit create and now I can close this window. I'm going to change my viewport to UV texture so that we can see all those points are on my UV grid. I can select this flat poly here and delete it. We were only using that to get a nice little border around our UV map for all of our points. And we're pretty much set up here in Modeler, so I'm going to go back to None for my UV map. I don't need the UV map anymore to see uh, back to my base. I'll change this back to my top view, so we're kind of back where we started. And all I have to do now is save out my object and get it over into Layout. So, File, Save Object As. Let's call this X Pins, for the, like X-Men Pins, 001. Again, always like to use a... A version number just in case if I make changes I can go 002 and know that there is a difference between the two. I don't like using naming conventions like use this or final or finished because then you have final 2, final 3, final 4 uh, and it's not really final. So we'll use 001, save and then we'll come up over here and we'll send object to layout. Okay so I'm going to just kind of zoom out and take a look at what we have. I'm going to select the light it's sitting right dead at the center and I'm just going to move it out of the way. We might end up later on rotating this around to get a, a particular look uh, when the pins are raised up to get a better look, but for right now we'll just leave it there. And I'm going to, I can displace this, uh, this geometry with procedurals, um, but let's go ahead and first start by using an image map because that's pretty much if we go back to uh, our image here, uh, that's how we could go about doing this. So it would be, I won't say it's impossible, but it would be pretty pretty difficult to do this with procedurals uh, and get these exact shapes. So an image, uh, an image map would work much better. So I'm going to go over to Image Editor, slide that over, and we'll go ahead and load up an image. And I'm going to go ahead and choose an image that's part of an image sequence. And the first frame is just black. But what we'll do is we'll hop over here to Source. And under Image Type, we're going to change that from Still. Instead of just using one frame, we're going to change that to Sequence. Okay. And what it allows me to do is scrub through here. And we can see our sequence. So this is just a, a CG head that's got some, some animation on it. And we'll use that uh, to... Uh, to work with for our displacement. It'll be a little more interesting than just a still image, but we need to remember that on frame 0 and 1, roughly in the beginning, it's all black, so we might not see anything, well, we won't see anything change until we pick a different frame, but this will give a neat effect of it fading in like it's being pushed into that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this down. Uh, we'll move over to Object, Properties, and under the Deform tab, we're going to work with displacements. Now we could go into the displacement map texture editor here, uh, but the request was actually to see how to do it in the node editor. And of course we have more control in the node editor, uh, in my opinion, so it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to hop over here. So the first thing we need to do is activate uh, the nodes for displacement with this checkbox here, and then open up the node editor. So I'll slide that over here. And I'm going to go ahead and close this down. I'm going to try and make a little bit of room here so that we can see our pins. So I'm going to zoom down a little bit there. Uh, so we can see our pins and our nodes at the same time, uh, just so we can kind of see what's happening. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take advantage of the image that we have. So add node, 2D textures, and I'll choose image. 
and I'm going to slide that over here. Uh, double click for the properties. For the image, I'm going to choose the image sequence that we just loaded up. I'm going to come down here to mapping and I'm going to choose UV map. And then for UV map, I'm going to choose pins. It's the only one, but it is the one that we made. I'm going to go ahead and turn off pixel blending and mip map quality. We don't need it. We, we just need, uh, we don't have to worry about how soft the image is or anything like that because we're just pulling straight um, RGB colors for the, for the pins to displace. Okay, I'll go ahead and close that. Now, I can't just, well, I could, but it's not going to give me the result I want. I can't just plug this into this, though it looks like it's doing the conversion. I've got to, I got to tell it a little more information. Uh, you know, color is only going to give me RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha. Uh, I've got my scalar and my bump. Well, I'm not really using a bump on this. I'm using the image as a displacement. So I'm going to go ahead and ha head over here and go to tools and choose make vector. And what this will allow me to do is plug my color into my Y. I only want the Y axis in this case because I only want the pins to move up. And now that converts it to vector and I can plug that in. Of course, we're not seeing anything, but if I scrub over some, as you can see, there's some shifting of those pins. It's really faint. Okay, it's really, really faint. So uh, you can see a little bit of shifting going on, but I want to see the pins really raise up. So what I can do is increase the uh, amount that this is raising it. So I'm going to come over to Math, Scalar, Multiply, and I'm going to fit this node in between these two nodes. So I'm going to plug the image into A, the result into Y, and double click. And for B, what, how do I want to multiply this? Well, I'm going to multiply it. I might go a little extreme here, but I'm going to go 10 just to, to make sure that we can see some kind of difference. And now I'll scrub through, and there we go. As you can see, as I scrub through, you can really see those pins raising up. Okay, what I'm going to do is change the lighting. So I'm going to go to lights and kind of rotate that light so we can see a little bit more of what's going on with the pin. Let's do something like that. And I'm going to keyframe that at 0 and delete that keyframe at 20 that I just made. Okay, so as I scrub through, we can see it starts off black. Black is a low value. It's 0, so it's not displacing any of the pins. And as I scrub through, we can see that um, it's starting to displace because we're starting to see if we... Let's go back to our image sequence. We start to see lighter values and the whiter a value is the higher it's going to raise the pin okay now one thing you might notice is that in this little window we can see eyes and nose and mouth and the shape of the head and the shoulders and it's pretty well defined what we're dealing with even though it's only a 200 by 200 image well that's 200 pixels by 200 pixels well we come over here I'm gonna go ahead and close this so we can see the flow here Okay, we've got our image, we're multiplying it, turning it into a vector, and going into our displacement. So that's our setup in the node editor. I'm going to close that, come over here, and kind of rotate so we can kind of see what's going on. And if we know that the, the image sequence is 200 pixels by 200 pixels, well, we only have 20 by 20. So we don't have, if you, if you think of each one of these pins as a pixel, we don't have enough pixels, enough pins, to really get the definition that we want. So if the more definition that you're going to want, the more pixels, well, the more pins you're going to need to get the defined shape. If you're just going for a fun pattern, well, you don't need that many pins. But if you, if you want more definition, you're definitely going to need more pins to pull that off. But you use the same setup that we've, we've done here. So in this scene, I've got a grid of pins that is 200 by 200, so a lot more pins to work with. I've got the exact same flow set up. Let's take a look. Object, Properties, come over to the Deform tab, Edit Nodes, and as you can see, we've got our image with the multiply, turning that into a vector into our displacement. So the same thing that we just got done setting up, go ahead and close that down, except because I have more pins, I can scrub through and each pin 
is being moved based off of that. Now you're seeing a lot more definition than we were seeing in the last example because we have more pins to work with. If I want even more detail, I'll need more pins. Now, something to keep in mind is uh, the reason that we shrunk down and created our UV map with those points is to ensure that each pin was going to be displaced as a whole. It wouldn't like part of the pin wouldn't lift up and the other part stay behind. So by shrinking that down and using that to drive the displacement, it ensures that each one of these pins stays solid. Okay, so here we have it. We've got a, a pin uh, toy driven by displacements uh, set up in the node editor. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys come up with.